energy efficiency sliders within En-ROADS. On the control panel, you will find two different energy efficiency sliders. One controls the energy efficiency improvements that we might be able to make within the transport sector. This includes our buses, our cars, our airplanes, our ships, trains, that kind of thing. And then the other slider controls uh, energy efficiency improvements we, may, we might make in buildings and industry. So this ranges uh, from households and energy improvements there to the appliances that we use within our houses to industrial facilities, manufacturing facilities, all of the kind of built environment of our world. And when we make improvements in either of these uh, sliders, what you'll see is a reduction in energy demand because what we're doing uh, is we're able to reduce the amount of energy that it takes to get the same amount of work done. So here, for example, let me move the energy efficiency transport slider on inroads, and you'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna move it to highly increased. And you, let me replay the change. And you see that the total amount of energy here on this left graph goes down. We can, we can look at this even more closely by going to our energy demand graph. So here, um, where we started with the black line, uh, was showing our in increasing energy demand over uh, the rest of the century. And then with that energy efficiency, you see a drop there. And if I add in the buildings and industry energy efficiency, you can see a further drop um, there. Now let's go under into the advanced view and take a deeper look at this. So when we're moving the slider to the maximum uh, end here for the transport energy efficiency, what we're saying is that for every year, the amount of energy required for all of that new capital, all of the new stuff in our transport sector, new buses, new cars, new engines, that kind of thing, uh, requires 5% less energy than it did the year before. What this is known as is energy intensity. And if we look over here at the graph of energy intensity of GDP, you'll notice that you don't really see any change till when is that? 2030 or so. So if we implement our policy starting in 2021, why would energy intensity of GDP not really show much of a difference until the 2030s? What's going on here is something that we'll get into deeper in the next module, which is called capital stock turnover delays. This is a dynamic where, well, there's a lot of old stuff when you can buy new cars and they, they're more energy efficient, but for all the new cars built, there are still tons and tons and tons of cars that are not gonna be bought or sold, they're just being used each year. So it takes time for those, um, all of that, those cars, for example, uh, to, to be retired, to be phased out. Um, we wanna use those things for, for their lifetime and, and not um, pull them off the road early. Uh, but uh, when it comes to energy efficiency, what we're really doing is saying, okay, for that car dealership, all the new cars are 5%, they require 5% less energy than the cars on that lot the year before. That's one way to think of it. Um, and there are programs out there that in which we could accelerate, accelerate um, that kind of withdrawal of all the ca cars. Um, they have like buyback programs where um, the government might buy old cars just to get them off the road. So that way that it increases the rate in which the new, more energy efficient cars um, come in, all kinds of things like that. Another key thing with energy efficiency to keep in mind too, is that it's money in people's pockets. Um, so if policies around energy efficiency are designed well, um, they can create savings so people don't have to spend so much money on energy. For example, um, if we think about uh, energy e efficiency improvements in buildings and industry, we can think about things like retrofitting homes and how, you know installing new appliances and uh, new light bulbs that are more energy efficient than the ones before. This can make really significant differences, particularly for low income households where there's a high energy burden, where a large amount of the income uh, of a house is going to pay for electricity and other types of uh, energy fu fuels and that kind of thing. And so if we can reduce that by having more energy efficiency improvements, um, it can really help people uh, a long ways. So those are just some of the considerations to keep in mind when thinking about the energy efficiency sliders. I hope that was helpful. Thanks.